What's up guys, this is a long video. Just remember you can double tap the right side of your phone to go to the next chapter or access specific chapters in the description. Oscar is already in the water. It's like night in the morning. I don't know what he's doing. Building some sort of pumping. Looks like a dock start thing. AWSI 2023. Not too much wind yet. It's really a nice day, but it's supposed to be good today and maybe even tomorrow. Friday doesn't look great. I might head out Friday, but we'll see. First things first, probably should go return this foil to Unifoil, see if they're over there. See the Unifoil tent over here. I have something for you. I know you don't want it back. You don't want to give it back. I know. It's scratched a little bit now. You probably don't want it anymore. <laughs> it's, you know. We'll, we'll talk about it here after you uh, turn the video <laughs> off. <laughs> Hey, look who it is. It's Robert from Blue Planet. Aloha. You just did the uh, M2O, right? Yeah. How was that? Ah, it was a good race. Um, good fun. Yeah, I mean, to do it in less than two hours when I'm used to doing it over five hours on a standard paddleboard. It's really cool <laughs> with the wing foiling, you know, so it allows you to go much faster. Awesome, yeah. man. I love your videos. I, you know, your Flocka video was what I was watching that a lot, trying to learn the Flocka and it really helped and uh, love the podcast as well, or, or the, the, you know, the interviews. On the show, yeah, thanks. Yeah. Great, man, thanks. Right. Robert just showed me this new board he has and it's really nice for you guys looking for more of a hybrid downwind uh, wing board. He used this in the uh, M2O, it's a, uh, 5.8 by 21 by 90 liters. It's also got the Tuttle in case you want to do Mike's Lab. That's really nice. It really looks good just in person. It looks really, really slick. I love that it's a flat bottom all the way to the rails. Very cool. Not a lot of rocker, but it's, it's, it's where you don't, have, you don't have to shim it. All right, I'm here with Adrian from Ocean Rodeo. He's going to talk about a few different things. Thanks, Rob. Uh, this is our double A series glide. It's just recently been released in a few sizes and there's more that are coming out and starting to ship pretty much immediately. This features our, our newest composite material, not only used on the leading edge, but also on the struts of the, uh, and the canopy of the wing itself. Down here we have the Alula Eris X material and this comes in on a GSM that's very, so very similar in weight to our gold material, uh, but it's binded on a cross weave as well. So it's performance across the warp, depth, and, and bias. It's a, it's a very stiff fabric. And then a little further out to the wingtips, you see it transitions to a smooth gray charcoal material. It's also part of the Ares series of uh, materials. It doesn't use the cross beam, cross weave, and that gives us a little bit of flex and play in the tips where you want to have it. You happen to see our new handles that will be coming to market soon. These are in a larger 43 centimeter version. So you've got a smaller gap in the uh, in the metal. Um, you're getting closer to a boom, uh, which we also offer. And then let's talk about the canopy because that's the uh, that's the real big leap forward as well. This is our Aeros series canopy. In terms of strength and performance compared to conventional uh, fabrics, uh, much much tighter very, very low stretch, extreme high performance against UV. So you get a real tight, locked in feeling from this canopy. And at the same time, it's something that is not gonna bag out and blow out and disintegrate over time. Long-term performance, not just the day you take it out of the bag, but 200 days later, our goal is to have a product that performs across its lifespan. They're also recyclable, right? Yeah, so this is part of the uh, first series of materials that we're introducing that are uh, recycle ready. So to my knowledge, there's nothing else in the industry uh, that doesn't necessarily end up in a landfill at the end of its life cycle. This material here can be reconstituted into into other future products as there's no solvents, there's off, no off-gassing in the production of it, and it allows us to effectively have an endless life on these products. It's, Very cool. it's a and, real game changer. And this is like the highest performance wing that you guys make and one of the highest performance wings on the market. Um, and you have another wing that's available too, coming up? Uh, yeah, you want a sneak peek? We're gonna go take a look at the 2024, the next generation of the A series glide. Awesome, let's take a look at that. Cool. So what's this one, Adrian? 
Oh, we're rolling. <laughs> we're rolling. Uh, so what you get in getting here, Rob, is a sneak peek of the the A Series Glide 2.0. This is the next generation of the A Series Glide. You've seen the previous A Series, and it features the gold leading edge and uh, and center strut, uh, but it uses a conventional uh, ripstop material on the canopy. In 2024, we launched this with a a lightweight. Eris canopy as well. So we're giving the, the A-Series Glide a big upgrade in terms of that, that tighter canopy view. A similar type of performance gains is the canopy that's used on our on our double A-Series, just in a slightly slightly different version. We kept the, the gold material, uh, so this is our GC82 gold. It's so light it's flying away on my hair. Uh, and then we use uh, the Eris material in the Aris X in the in the middle, so we're giving it a little bit of more stiffness yeah. in the center of the wing. The gold material is still very stiff, so you have that on the on the outside. It's it's for riders that you know love that upwind drive. We can do a nice small diameter leading edge, so it gives you yeah. great upwind drive. It's a super lightweight wing. If you love going fast, you're gonna load the wing more than the average rider. A series is a really great place to be. So this one's a little bit a little bit more affordable than the other one, or is that the? They're going to fall in at slightly different different price points, but still, um, you know, a product that whether you're looking at the gold, the Aris, or the double egg lights, uh, built to last, UV durability. There's nothing it does poorly. Well, thanks for the info. It was great talking to you again this year. Thanks again, Rob. All right, I stole a progression from Uni. They lent me one so generously. The 170. It was actually the 140. I just thought it was a 170. Uh, just to like, grab whatever was available. This works. I know it works. Let me go test this uh, ocean rodeo, I guess. Which unifoil are you taking? 200. Oh, yeah, I just tested it. I took out a six because that's all they had. It was a little bit windy at that moment for the six. I felt a little bit overpowered on it. I used to be jumping, had great hang time. The, the wing is incredibly stiff and responsive. It was almost too much in, in, that, in that wind. It would have been better in light wind. Uh, here's me just testing the flagging. It's so light. It's very, very stable for the wave riding. But yeah, I was a little surprised with the stiffness. It's very, very stiff. And, and I thought that's like always a good thing, but it might be a little bit of a, an issue if you're overpowered. Well, you definitely could size down on the uh, this Ocean Rodeo, whichever one this one is, it's uh, it's so snappy, so stiff, so tight on the canopy tension. It, it rides, rides big, rides big. So real, a lot of power. The Axis guys are are over here. Should we should we say hi? We haven't we haven't dropped in since we stopped riding them. This is the most famous person in San. Oh. Hey, what's going on, Rob? <laughs> How's it going, man? Good, Good to see you guys. Foil fever over there. Good. The Tahitian twist. I've just been yelling Tahiti every time I see him on the water. I don't know if they realize that's me. I've been yelling Tahiti, Tahiti. <laughs> you guys have anything, anything good this year? Oh, it's always good every year. It's all Spitfires this year, right? Spitfires and Art Pros. <laughs> art Pros. What's the Art Pro? What's the deal with that? So the the older arts and everything else. So and then we came out with the Spitfires. Got the Spitfires going here, and then just this is kind of a combo of the old art and a Spitfire. They made the Art Pro. Notice a little bit more elliptical on the bottom. Oh. Change in that. So that's the difference. The upgraded art stuff. Huh. So faster, turned better. This is what they rode. Uh, Edo ran in the uh, Molokai to Oahu race. And uh, took third place in that thing, so did real well. And I, yeah, and I heard he didn't even, he was like a late start and, it was a late start and, and he caught him. everyone. Yeah. <laughs> he was on this little boy. So this little one, it hard to get the thing up out of the water and everything. All once he did, he caught everyone, was leading for a little bit. And then um, once it got into a uh, past China wall where James and uh, Oscar got past him, and then it was just a, a prone paddle into the finish, and everyone stayed in the same spot. But uh, Kyle Lenny also ran uh, one of the, uh, I think he ran the uh, 951 also. I've never heard of him. 
So, yeah, I, some, some guy I just heard of, you know, they just mentioned the name. I thought I'd throw it out there, you know. What are you riding right now? You're, you're supping still, right? Yeah, I, I pretty much sup foil. And so I'm riding the uh, Spitfires. And where I am down in uh, San Clemente, San Onofre area, uh, we don't get really big stuff. And so usually it's going to be the 960 or the 900 in the back. Uh, super fun. They turn really well. They kind of took the prospect and car of turning and everything else. Gave it a little more speed and with the elliptical, a little more cord, just pumps really well and everything else. So connects well, pumps well. Uh, they also came up with the different tails. We used, we had the progressives that everyone was riding. Yeah, I've written those. So if you remember the progressives, the 325s, uh -huh. for instance, and then they went to the skinnies and stuff. So um, if you notice the difference, a lot less cord, a little bit wider, but then a little bit thinner also. So again, reducing drag going fast everything else uh helping it turn and everything else as well so yeah it's just uh every year make something new well, i've been thinking about doing um a uh, a sup flat water uh start attempt i have no sup background like i've paddled i've paddled up the river in Kauai, and uh you know, I'm, I'm pretty strong you know in the shoulders oh, right right but uh i have terrible balance but i just thought about doing a video where i flail maybe i should come down and, and do it definitely you. come down definitely yeah. come down i've got a board for you to uh to ride we've got the big let me show you the third you know the that's 1300 what it, that's, right well that's why i'm saying it well i think the 1310 is what i probably yeah, need right i don't, I don't have know. a 1310 for you but definitely the 1300 so yeah big foil run a little bit longer fuse on it a little bit bigger tail the 460 tail uh, works really well on these things and uh, we can flail around together because I flail around with it I get the thing just coming up the water and then my uh, check age light comes on being older oh, and stuff no. and I'm done I was like okay I gotta stop right oh, wait, you're, oh, wait you're not that puts my odds at very low and it's no 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 you, you've got the you got youth on your side I got you got youth and endurance uh, oh, maybe yeah. if I lose 30 pounds I asked Oscar I, I, I saw Oscar oh, at big yeah. wins and I was like what size paddle do I need? I don't even know. He's like mid forehead. What do you think about that? No, I, I agree. I agree. We uh, basically, so if you think about paddle length, uh, what I like to do is I'll stand up on something. So the blade is kind of in the water below the board. And then I want to have it basically around eye level to forehead level, because as soon as you start getting your arm above your head, that's when you start getting shoulder problems. Ah. So now you're, now you're trying to push down and you've got this leverage up here. So if you can keep it here, and then just use your legs, come down, and, and, and you actually, you're kind of pulling yourself to the paddle. You're not pulling the paddle back to you. So you want to kind of, so if you're on a skateboard, okay? So you're on your skateboard, you're here like this, and you pull yourself on the skateboard to go, all right? So you wouldn't try to pull this pull back to you. You're not going to go anywhere. Same thing with the paddle. The paddle is basically just a pull you're putting in the water and you pull yourself to it. Oh. I, that's awesome. Next time I have a day off and it's no wind, let's go down and let's do, do it. it. Let's do it. Let's do it for it'll, sure. It'll get, it'll get yeah. thousands of views for sure. Yeah, we'll go to uh, the baby beach right in there okay. where the uh, tall ships are in Dana Point. Okay. The old uh, pirate ships yeah. and stuff like that, Dana Point. Got a nice little dock right there that we take yeah. off from. and. Yeah. Um, yeah, nice and calm and everything else. Awesome. Super fun to do. Hey, dude, thanks for so all the info. Oh, good to see you, brother. Yeah, great to see you, man. Good to see you. Cool, cool, cool. I'm here with the uh, the Tahitian twins. Okay, go ahead. And we're trying to phonetically write their name out so we don't butcher their names. These guys are absolute rippers. It's uh, Hao Nui and Tuahura. <laughs> they switch spots. Damn, oh, come on, guys. These guys playing tricks on me. <laughs> Okay, how do we to our that's messed up guys. These guys are absolute rippers. They surf, they do like crazy cutbacks on the waves, they do wing, they do seven twenties, they flat water start any foil, you name it, they'll flat water start it. I'm telling you. On these like sixty liter boards and stuff. Hey, you guys wanna say hi? Hi guys. Uh these guys are awesome. Keep an eye out for them. They're they're just gonna keep crushing. Thank you. Peace, guys. Thank you. We've been running into this guy on the water the whole time. <laughs> I see another familiar face down here. Another SoCal local. Where are the wings? I was promised wings. And this is Sabrina from Captain Kirk's with Jin Kiteboarding. Their wing ship didn't, uh, actually didn't make it to AWSI, but we'll do a video soon. Good to see you. Good to see you too. <laughs> I don't think I need to talk about the F1 too much because so many people have them, but... I kind of like the way this new wing looks. I might just pick it up, just feel it. 
See how it feels now that I got an F1 board. Guess I'm an F1 guy. Watch out, Luca. I'm coming for your job. The new wing feels great. Do not love the handles. Oh, here's the uh, Ventus. I probably should try that. I know the big dogs will want my opinion on that. I never got the chance to ride it, but I did pick it up and feel it in the wind. It felt light. It felt taut. It felt really, really good. Yeah, I talked about Nash having ugly wings last year and disappointing wings. Like, their old wings were, we all know, terrible. Like, just absolutely terrible. Whenever I see someone like a 6'8 Nash and they're struggling, I know it's because they just don't have any power in their wing. And they, they think they're on a big wing, but they're not. Like, the old ones. Uh, I had a chance, George Clout over at Leo Carrillo, he has um, a couple of these. And I had a chance to ride one because uh, Riley was uh, underpowered one day, so I switched wings with her. I thought it was really good. I thought it was a nice, fun, light wing, reasonably priced. So I don't think I need to demo it here, but the ADX is definitely a, 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 a good option. If you're looking for a reasonably priced wing that works well, uh, good for just like free riding, riding waves, that kind of thing. And it looks pretty good, I think. It's not a duotone. I, I know it looks like a duotone knockoff. It's very different. It's got a different feel. Well, thank God you don't need his bell. Hey guys, it's Ashton with Nash. I'm here to show you the new 2024 oil lineup. We've got some great changes on the wing side, prone side, and kite. Here's what we're working with. New high aspect series. We've got higher aspect ratios, low close to 10. Going to have a much more efficient glide. Turn on a dime. Got a little upturn on the wing tip to give you a little better turnability. Still the same solid connection we've always had. It's compatible with our older fuselages as well. Uh, but really a nice upgrade for the high aspect side. Moving on from that, we've got our Ultra Jet. More of your mid aspect foil, thicker cord, uh, a lot more kind of turnability, cruisability. You want this for like a beginner type foiler or foiling in some steeper waves. It'll stay in the pocket a little bit better. What's that biggest one for beginners? 2000? Uh, this big one right here, we got a 2000. The Ultra Boat. This one's killer. Uh, get you on the water when nothing else will. Very low stall point, super easy glide. Um, perfect for bigger people, light winds, or those who are looking to start winging. This one's a home run. Um, beyond that, we updated our wing boards as well. Uh, those changed pretty substantially. We actually oh, the have wing one. boards. Oh, really? Let's take yeah, a look at that. We've got one half rigged right over here if you want to come check this guy out. Over here, we're looking at our wing Carbon Ultra Ascend. Um, it's been a great board for us, I'd say a total home run, but we did some moderate changes this year. Um, for the smaller sizes, we made it have a flat tail out the back rather than having that kick. The uh, reason we did that, it has a better glide speed, it's easier to start. Um, coming from surf technology, it's always going to be a flat, simple tail that's the fastest. If you look at like a Mini Simmons, you'll see that immediately. Yep. And uh, these things have a really great glide. We also rounded out the top a little bit, put a little more width here. Um, it's going to give you a little more water line, more stability, making these boards just easy to rip on, easy to get going, and a really solid wing foil option. Awesome. Well, thanks for the info, man. Yeah, my that, pleasure. Uh, that, uh, the, what was it, the 900, or what was it called? What's the name of that one we were looking at, the foil, the, the HA? Is yeah, it 900? Ultra HA, high aspect, 840 is the one. 840. We on. Yeah, 840 and 1040, my personal favorites. We've got all the way from 640 up to 1440. Yeah. Um, other cool stuff is our wings. Our ADX has been a smashing thing. Yeah, I like it. It's a fun wing. It kind of just wants to ride and free ride yeah. and surf. It's, it's good. a phenomenal one. It works really well. Cool. Well, okay. yeah, that's our new Nash line. I hope you guys love it. Check out Nash.com and uh, call your retail for any questions. Sounds, Thanks, sounds good. Man. Thanks. So uh, I think we already saw in the video or maybe in one of my other videos, depending on how I edit this, these new Armstrong wings apparently boost like crazy. Aiden Nicholas was just jumping so massive at Rufus the other day, twice as high as anyone else. Like, no joke. That's why I broke my board. I was trying to keep up with him. I wasn't even getting close. I was riding with Mark, uh, a local guy, yesterday on the downwinder, and he's just telling me, like, these things, just when you boost, they just, like, they just let you down with so much uh, uh, cushion. They parachute you down really well. They look fast. They, they, the proof is in the pudding. Aiden was absolutely ripping on these the other day. Looks like Ensis has a big wing with the struts. I guess they uh, license that technology too. We recognize this man over here. You're all, what's up? Murray's, Murray's in the house. Good to see you. Full test mode. <laughs> they, I had everything. 
They're honestly, if you're gonna buy F1, they're probably the people to talk to. They have a lot of good F1 stuff. They're up in Carpinteria, and super knowledgeable over, man over here, Tom. So great. Thanks, bro. You know, I upgraded to the SLS from the pinion, but well, my pinion just kind of wore out because you know Dacron has a limited life. But you know what? The SLS is not that much better than the pinion, and. Uh, in some ways, the, the pinion is better for, like, surfing and stuff. And it's, it's the coolest looking wing out there, in my opinion, with the red stripe. We're selling these things so cheap, guys. You, crazy not to get one if you need a new wing. Oh, the fly surfer guys. And their, their team rider, Nathan, is just hey, absolutely hey, hey. killing it. My old friend, Jeff, wouldn't go on camera last year. What? You gotta pay. This guy just completed the, the M20. I survived. No, you were doing well. No, I you, were, I was watching he said, live. He said I would oh, I never do it again. No, really? I, I want to do it next year. Should I do it? Yes, you should. Okay. As a, as a bucket list, just mark it off. What's it going to cost me? Uh, a lot. Don't even think about the money. <laughs> this guy right here, he won't brag about himself. He's one of the most yeah, she taught me smooth everything. kiters, <laughs> wingers around. Quit this guy. Man. Say that again. This guy knows what everything. he's doing. He knows what he's talking about. Fixmykite.com, kiteboarding.com. They have. Yes. All the best stuff. Wingboarding.com. We got everything.com. Yeah, this guy really knows what he's talking about. I mean, he really does. <laughs> I'm here with the man, the myth, the legend, Katie Maui Kane. Hey, guys. What's up? You're kind of like a big deal uh, in LA, man. People are always <laughs> talking about you and your your tails. Uh, you, got, you have your tails with you here? Or? I do. They're over at the KT booth. So I'm cool. super stoked. This is my first time at this event. And I'm um, here with KT showing off some new boards and foils we're working on are you oh so you guys are designing a new line yeah yeah cool do you have any demos over there today or um we have we have stuff to look at not to ride yet oh uh, very i'd cool. be stoked to to show it off in a bit yeah i'd love to go talk to you about it um man really inspiring just watching you out there and you know doing the the downwinding and stuff it's really cool man and yeah thank you all right. and whatever i can do to make it easier for for everyone else um that's that's the goal uh, yeah, I, I've been I've been interested in trying to um, I ride the Unifoil right now and I'm trying to get a little more glide out of it and a little bit more efficiency. I'd be interested in, in talking to you about like what tail I should maybe think about. Yeah, for sure. Cool, awesome. man. I'd be stoked to help you out. Thanks. Great to meet you. <laughs> Ozone had the new double skin wing and you can hear how excited I was. Uh, that's Johnny Heineken taking it out. Are you guys demoing that? No, or just for like no, special feel, feel testing back to back again. So. If Johnny rides it, I should be able to ride it. Oh, is that Johnny? <laughs> we uh, interviewed Elevate last year. They had the uh, WFS wing, I think. This is a new wing. It looks nice. It's got nice, clean colors. Uh, looks like rigid handles. Really taut canopy. Looks good. All right, Fred heard me talking about the wings, and he wants to talk about them instead because he knows more about them. Yeah, I figured I'd give you guys a spiel. So this year's Slingshot, we have a new logo, so it's a big S on the canopy. We have the Javelin, which is our last year's product that we still kept in the line. This is called the J-Hook D-Power System. So when it gets wet, you're able to pull the profile in, which makes the canopy flex down and lower the amount of power that you have in the wing. So when you get overpowered, it's like a deep power on a kite or on a windsurf sail when you pull the, the clue in tighter. Um, it's really helpful for those that want that high power to get off the beach, but when they get out there, they want to kind of make the wing feel a little lighter and not pull them as hard. That's a really cool idea, and I haven't seen that anywhere else. Yeah, yeah. So it's pretty neat. It works quite well. We have two boom options there. There's the really small grip, which I really like, and then there's the bigger grip that works across all javelins. You could just have one boom. These are like the new top products that, that we all love. This is the V4. So the V3 had a lot of power, a lot of pocket, a lot of profile. That created a ton of power to get you up on foil, but now that people have kind of figured out how to wing, we decided to flatten the profile a little bit to make it feel faster, pull you through the window, basically have forward drive instead of pulling you downwind, which the V3 did a little bit more. Um, so you can see the canopy is a lot tighter. We have the high tension story. You want a little bit of looseness in the tail so that it can absorb the gusts when you're flagging it out. On the underside, we've got the new handles um, that click in quite easily. So when you deflate this thing, there's a little clip here that you push and the handles are able to slide out very quickly. So if you're going on a trip or something, you could take just one set or two set of handles depending on what size range you bring. So 
four five and above have the five four hundred millimeter handles, which are a bit longer. Four zero and below have the three hundred millimeter handles. Then we have my favorite wing, which is the NXT. It's our new Alula wing. So it's got the classic um, fancy yellow material that everyone likes. It is lighter, but what I really like about it is that it's stiffer. Like wings, you want as much stiffness as possible so that when you pump it, you get as much power out of it and it doesn't flex out in the frame. The difference between these two wings design-wise other than the material is we actually changed the frame. We flattened the dihedral in the NXT because this wing is more suited to the advanced rider that's willing to spend the extra money to get top of the line product. You also get less sway side to side, that oscillation that you might feel on some wings with a lot of dihedral. So this wing free flies really, really well. It also has a different handle on the nose. Um, it's a little bit more rigid. So it's basically this wing is made to ride swell as well as possible. You have as much control over the frame as possible versus our B4 has the softer handle because yeah. it's a it's a different rider that we're selling to. Yeah, yeah. I like a nice stiff leading edge handle. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so tell me about this foil you were yeah, holding. That seems is, to be really interesting. This is the fancy foil that we all love. It's called the PCM 899. It's very different from the other wings in the PTM series, but because it's a wing that is suited to the more advanced rider, we still had it in the Phantasm Total Mastery category. That's what PTM stands for. Oh. Um, so it's 925 square centimeters, but it has the low end of like a 1300 square centimeter foil. It's a little bit thinner than some of the, the foils in this range. So it's yeah. going to have that high end speed and yeah. glide. It's also got the turned up tips. Yeah, yeah, adds stability out on the edge. It's a little lower aspect than your general high aspect foil, mainly because when we were testing them, the super high aspects got really unruly at speed. Um, if you bring down the aspect ratio from like a 10 to what this is, an 8.8, .8, it makes it a lot more stable at speeds and you gain that low end that you really need. Um, but you still maximize the amount of glide that you have. You're kind of trying to balance everything. Actually pan over here. We've got this whole story that we're trying to sell called the stabilizer step method so the stabilizers i think only cost around 300 bucks so you can really make your ride a lot more lively just by investing a little bit more most of our foils come with the ps400 this is the most stable it's a thicker profile it's got winglets so oh yeah that's locked. really thick as soon as you outgrow that you jump to the ps360 this foil has pitch stability because we grew the cord but it lost yaw stability which is the horizontal axis so it makes it so that the foil is livelier in the turning and you kind of learn how to how to fine tune your riding to to that yaw axis once you outgrow that and you feel like you're breaking the foil out and pushing it and kind of learning how to use your hips to turn you can jump to the ps340 which has yaw and roll when you get past the 340 if you've like unlocked the yaw you unlock the roll and you want to start to re-lock in the yaw so that you can press even harder and not have the fins blow out quite as much like on a surfboard you can go to 325. Um, this one has, as you can see, big wing tips that go up. So it's really locked in the yaw, but unlocked in the pitch, which is up and down, and the roll, which is like a plane banking on a corner. So, so you, you like that better than the, the... I like this one, yeah. I've really? been riding this one a lot lately, but if I'm trying to really push hard turns and kind of feel like I'm driving a sports car that I don't want to slide out on the road, then I'll ride this one. If I want, if I'm in smaller conditions, and I want to have the foil feel more lively, I'd use the 340. Huh, so interesting. The idea is that you kind of work your way down the stabilizers instead of um, buying a new front wing every time you feel like you want a new feel. Cool, very cool. Man, thanks for the info. Really, yeah, really sure. knowledgeable, really Definitely. helpful. Good to meet you. Yeah, great. Thanks, yeah, man. Yeah. So there's also this little area out here. I guess this is where they relegate the people they don't like or something. I don't know. As far as like a few other things are. Oh, foil trim. That's something. I stopped by the Arntzen Marine booth. They have these hats for sailing and winging that give you sun protection. They're supposed to stay on your head better because they're aerodynamic. And then they also float if you drop them in the water. It's got this uh, mesh that's proprietary. It's really breathable for like down in humid areas. Pretty nice. I said no limits mast. I've actually never seen one of these in real life. I just went and talked to the No Limits guys. Uh, picked up the 93 mast. It felt very light. And they said they had some issues with their first run and the adhesive they were sourcing. And so they had some uh, durability issues with the first one. But this one, they said they've been load testing. It's really good. They also have uh, set up an 85 centimeter with a 200 progression. 
And I've been meaning to try the 200 progression. Didn't think I was going to do it on this trip, but they've already got it set up. I think I'm just going to go grab my board and go try it out and just, uh, yeah, see how it goes. All right, I put the uh, No Limits 85 with a Uni 200. And here you can immediately see how much easy lift the 200 has. I mean, so easy to get up, so stable. Uh, that's why I think this would be a great beginner foil. And then you can actually use it. Here you see me pumping. This is a first pump run. After you outgrow it as a beginner, you can use it to pump and to, to do downwinding, to learn subfoiling. It's got a ton of low-end grunt. Um, you know, the Progression 170 probably would be better for smaller riders for a lot of those same things. But for bigger riders, you probably appreciate the size. Um, yeah, hear me here. I'm trying just some back winding to see how that's always a good way to test glide. And yeah, it was fine. There was no wind there, and I was still able to do a little bit. Here, I test uh, out a, a little uh, toe siding, pumping, seeing how it feels on, on the swell and the turns. It turns great for the size, like, you it really doesn't feel big. Uh, there, I just doing a little skid out, see how it handles that. The foil feels, you know, fairly small. Here, I tried to, to rip around a turn as fast as I can, just to push it to the limits. Um, yeah, the, the, it probably also felt a little bit smaller because that no limits mast is very, very, very stiff. Um, could I tell that much just in bumping it? Maybe. It probably made the foil feel about one size smaller. I think what would really be nice about that mass, though, is doing the, the jumps and the flips and stuff. I mean, it weighs nothing. It's really, 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 really a lightweight mast. If it's really beefed up and as strong as they say, that could be an amazing option for freestyle, especially if you're a smaller rider. You probably aren't going to break it for sure. But yeah, here you see me just pumping forever, getting so much energy. Everything you put into that foil, you're getting back out. Just tons of low-end grunts. I don't know how much you want to watch of this, so just keep going. Go as far as your legs will take you, you know. And if there's any swell, you won't have to do very much with your legs. Yeah, here's showing a little bit more of the actually just riding the swell on it. I went all the way out to the other side of the river by the bridge, and there's just a little bit of a channel that, that was isolating some swell. Yeah, there you go. See, turning into toe side. And then pumping toe side, like, you know, over, I'm pumping over there on toe side. You know, so connecting by pumping toe side to there we go, I'm back on a swell and I'm able to turn. Look how easily it turns. And then I pumped in, you know, just to show everyone on land how good the uh, Progression 200 pumps. All right, I just rode the uh, Progression 200, tons of uh, low end, really good beginner wing foil wing or even like a, maybe like a sup wing, learning to sup. Uh, I down went into the bridge on some pretty small swell, pretty good. Yeah, and also the no limits uh, mass, super stiff, really light. Seems pretty good. If it's if it's beefy like they say, it, it could be a really good option. Pretty cool. The two SoCal legends here, Dane and Marcella. Last year, you'll remember I didn't press record on the video, so we didn't get. It. Hey guys, how you doing? Good. Everything good. This place is perfect. You guys have been killing it, just like supping everywhere. It looks it's awesome. Living the life, and that they got the new fem family member this yeah, year. Yeah, Malo. This is Malo. Oh, hey, hi, Malo. Gosh, so cute. Yeah, we kind of like into this sub filing thing now. I can tell. I think this is the new thing. I can't stop thinking about this. It's really? just like I sleep thinking about this. I wake up thinking about this. I see the white captain and I'm like I have to go there. So wow. my plan now is drive to the hatch and go sub filing. Right now? Right now. Oh. <laughs> you Were you at roof? What foils are you using for that? Uh, really depends. I ride F1, so I was most of the time riding the 1090 or the 890 Eagle. Okay. And it's really good. But he's riding. Yeah, it's the lift, the 110 has been insane. Here, really? So. I saw Kenny was getting 30 mile an hour drop ins on yeah. that. That's crazy. The last couple of days, I feel like I could go with a like, really small foil. It was so strong. The bumps were so big. Yep. It feels like ocean. It's just amazing. Thanks for talking to me. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, go together. Go. Let's do it. Thank you. <laughs> all right i'm here at uh always kiting and ppc and sob foil and uh i'm gonna take out this uh 73 ppc board it looks killer it's so light it's super super light and then i'm gonna i don't know take out some sob foil and they have these new ppc wings that look beautiful 
They look really, really good. Seth uh, creates on Instagram. He's been telling me about them. It says they're really good. We'll check it out. So I took out a 73 liter PPC board with the 835 Saab. Um, the foil was in the wrong spot. The straps were in the wrong spot. Look how far forward I'm having to do. So it was kind of hard to get a real good feel for this foil. It felt pretty lively, like really good for surf, but it did have some glide as well. So um, yeah, it was fast, probably good for freestyle or surf. Um, like I said, hard to figure it out, but I made it my mission to try and pull a flocka on it here. Look at my stance. It's so far forward, but I was able to, to land a flocka. That board is really, really strong. Like there's no flex in the rails and it's insanely light. It probably weighed eight pounds. It feels like half the size. Oh man, look at my hair. This is, this is the main man. I need a haircut. I'm losing my, oh, disaster. This is the main man in Kauai. Seth creates on Instagram. Super cool dude. <laughs> Plays the uke. I don't know why the uke's not out yet. I'm going to do interviews with that later. There you go. He, <laughs> he's in the, he's in the uni. He's on the PPC now. Yeah. Is that, yeah, yeah. And, right. and, uh, what else? A couple other things. If you're ever in Kauai, this is the guy to hit, hit up him and Paka Foil. They'll get your lessons. They'll teach you. He actually just taught one of my friend's sisters, uh, Alice Gretchen's, uh, oh, yeah. sister. But anyway, yeah, hit this guy up. He's a ripper. He does some really cool freestyle, really cool wave riding, does some great videos. <laughs> All right, it's been a long day. I think I'm going to call it a day and go home. The best quirky, funny videos on Instagram for wing foil. This is wing with, winging with Annie. Oh, yeah. What's up, Annie? What's up? Did you get on some stuff today? Yeah, I went on some slingshot gear and some north gear, walked around, saw a lot of cool wings. Um, but definitely got my work cut out for me today. Oh yeah? Yeah. Did you, did, was there anything you liked in particular? Um, I really like the new, how they're all going with like the new handles, but I feel like the hard handles are coming down and hitting boards. Like I have my, one of mine and it just like, I feel like it's going to wreck my board. But North is coming out with like this, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but they're able to put like a they're clipping it in like on a bumper onto the hard handle and it just like clips in and stays there. And then they're gonna eventually build them to all their wings, but it's like rubber, so it's not gonna hurt the board. Mm. So that was what stoked me because I never really wanted to commit to hard handles just for that reason. But now hard handles might be in my future. I'm even boom now. I know, I have one that's a boom, I... but it still doesn't yours do that. I, you know, I break everything, so I, yeah, I scratch true. and break it, so I don't, like, it doesn't really matter, but, like, I've been trying some new tricks where the boom is kind of, kind of clutch. Yeah, uh, where that's are you, true. Where are you at with your riding right now? Um, I'm at the point where I'm still trying to jump. I've gotten better at landing. I think my highest is, like, I don't know, six feet. That's recorded. That's high. I know, it, it felt really high. And then I'm working on my toe side to heel side tack, mm. and then on my other side, I got one toe side to heel side on my starboard side. I got one side down and I need to work on the other side. There's someone on camera feeding lines, but they don't they don't want to be on camera very much. <laughs> He's a very good wing foiler. Or sorry, yeah, wind foiler. That's James from Wind Dance, if anyone comes to Hood River. Oh, she called him out. Uh, cool. Well, it's great catching up with you. Let's wing together. If next time you guys drive through LA, you didn't hit me up last time. Let me know. We'll wing. Heck yeah. <laughs> Man, uh, I'm so tired. I had to wake up early and, and do laundry and I was up late, like trying to edit some footage. Just, I'm worried I'm going to run out of space on my phone. I got so much to do. I think I'm going to do this as a separate AWSI video and now I'll do the Hood River video and then a Progression 125 video. I think I'll do that. I ended up riding the Progression 200 today. That was the first thing I rode um, with the No Limits mast. Really nice mast. Super lightweight. Seems really strong. Seems good. The Progression 200, it was interesting. It's definitely more... It's a slower than... I don't even know how to describe it. It doesn't have, a, it doesn't have that much more pump and glide than the 170. But... It's, it's, it's got a lot of low end and it doesn't get overpowered. It really actually is very stable and feels very good. I went and did some like downwinding on it. And I think it would be a great foil to get someone into foiling. Honestly, you could give them that 
let them learn how to foil on it, and then they'd still have a nice big uh, foil in case they wanted to start going up. Sorry, the wind the wind's kind of picking up. In case they wanted to like go learn how to downwind or just have a light a light wind foil. It's pretty good. I also tried the 140 uh, with the Ocean Rodeo. The Ocean Rodeo, I was kind of a little bit surprised by. I took it out. I was super lit. I was on that six and I was super lit. But I don't know if it was because it was windy or if it just that 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 wing is so uh, taut. I think it just gets overpowered kind of easily. It gets like a little bit crazy. I didn't think it was possible to have too stiff a wing, but maybe. I'm not sure I really, I don't know. I'm not sure I really love that wing. And I gave them my, a great idea for a built-in wing mount. It's a great idea. It uses their the same technology they use for their handles to add a selfie stick to the back of the wing. Uh, we'll see if they implement it. They really should. It's, it's, a, it's a killer idea. I mean, everyone wants footage of themselves, and you don't want to stick the wing, in, you know, the, the selfie stick into the strut like I do. You just have the Ocean Rodeo handle system at the back of the wing, and you put the selfie stick in there. It's, it's simple. Uh, what else did I try? Oh, yeah, I tried that with the 140. I thought I was on the 170 progression. I was actually on the 140, which actually tells you that the 140 has quite a lot of pump and glide. That's a pretty good foil. It's probably a better size for me than the 125 after trying the 125 yesterday in like not as good conditions, but I just really like the 125. So I don't care if it doesn't have quite as much low end. Yeah, I got on some Saab stuff. Uh, that foil was in the wrong spot. The PPC board is really impressive. It's very strong and it weighs nothing. I was on the 73 liter and it feels like maybe 50 liters. It's so cool. Uh, but it was hard to really ride it because I was on this foil was in the wrong spot. Uh, I don't even know if I'd like the foil. It was like an 835 or something. Yeah, and they didn't let me get on the wing. They were all getting on the wing, the new wing themselves. The new wing looks really good. Really, really good. It looks like it's going to be very high performance. Uh, the Tahitian twins were taking it out, so we'll see if there's some video of that. Anyway, I think I'm going to call it a day. It's getting late, and I'm just going to try and catch up on some editing. I, I'm not going to go to the parties or anything like that. I'm here with Alex from uh, No Limits. Hi, morning. Uh, yeah, so I'm the brand manager at No Limits, and we're here at AWSI. We're demoing all our V2 masts. It's like 20% stiffer than the V1, and the V1 was already pretty stiff, so it's one of the stiffest carbon masts in the market. It's one millimeter thinner than the V1, so that makes it faster. And we have a new profile. The profile was designed to eliminate ventilation, and so we've had this in testing for about eight months now. Uh, some of the top riders in the world uh, came to Wild. Adam Bennett have been riding it. They're saying it's fast, it's stiff, and they can't get it to ventilate, which is super important because the guys are aggressive riders, they're carving hard, and the last thing they want to do is like self-destruct when it ventilates. Another thing is it's super light. Yeah, it's, I noticed that. <laughs> yeah, it's probably uh, the lightest uh, foil mass on the market. We haven't done like a comprehensive study of all the foil mass in the market, but uh, our 72 is 1.2 kilograms. And so uh, an easy way to shave weight from your foil setup is just to replace your mast with a no limits mast. We get a lot of questions about the adapters. I'll start with the board adapter. Um, so the board adapter is permanently bonded on. There's no screws that attach to the mast. Uh, it's offered with two bolt holes. The one on the outside is M6, which are the slidable ones. The one on the in inside are M8. So you can use both bolts to secure it to the track. And that was important because when we tried to get it on my board, I have that weird F1 track and I couldn't use the M8s, but the M6 worked. So that was awesome to have that option. Yeah, so that's nice. Um, we spent a lot of time engineering uh, or designing the board plate to be as hydrodynamic as possible. You'll see it has a lot of curves. It's not very blocky. It has a lot of like swept curves to it. This helps uh, like when you're prone foiling or winging, when you're trying to pop up, the less drag it is, the easier it is to pop up. So that's one really nice aspect. And then for the V2, you'll notice that the adapters are black instead of blue. We didn't do that for cosmetic reasons. We did that for performance reasons. We figured out that the black anodized is about four times as thick as the blue anodized. 
Therefore, it's much more resistant to corrosion, scratches, and any physical damage. What adapters do you have uh, currently? This is a bonded on fuselage adapter. It's made out of aluminum uh, that we machine here at the shop here in White Salmon. It's 100% made in America. Mm. We machine all the adapters from like a solid block of aluminum. We hand lay up the mass with carbon and uh, then we bond it together. The only outside process on the mask that we don't do ourselves is we get the adapters sent to anodize. And then we paint it in house in the shop. So get a lot of questions like, hey, like what percentage of the mask are you getting from overseas source in China? Zero percent, actually. So these are 100% made in America. It's pretty rare these days. Like the vast majority are getting made overseas, you know, in Asia. Each mask comes with a bonded on adapter. This one's Takuma. It's a bonded on mic slab adapter. Gotcha. What different uh, adapters do we offer? We offer the Takuma 3 volt, Takuma Kijiri HD, Axis, F1, Lift, Gabrina, Sap Foil Kraken, Mic Slab, Unifoil, and SPG. Jim Strangfellow, he's not here, mm -hmm. but he's a local machinist in the gorge, and he makes uh, adapters to fit on our Takuma 3 volt uh, mask. Oh, cool. With his adapters, you can get like a lot of compatibility out of the Takuma 3 bolt. Awesome. I love the mast. It felt really stiff and I love the fact that it's light because I'm trying the back flips and stuff and I want the I want the foil as light as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. Well thanks for the info. Yeah no problem. Uh, we're at AWSI and uh, if you're around we would love for you to come demo on the mast. Cool. All right. Sounds good. Going. Hey so I'm kind of in there kind of not. This is stringy on Instagram. Yeah. He's the one that No Limits was talking about. He does um, adapters for all the different fuses and different wing brands. Is that, is that right? Did That's, I get that? That is it. I make a lot of custom fuselages as well. Very cool. So check them out, uh, especially if you're going to be riding the No Limits. Yeah. <laughs> all right. I'm here at uh, AFS. This is, uh, I know this brand because you, you know, I might see Jan and Cali on my Instagram tearing it up on he's got the ahd board and he flies on that thing and i'm here with richard matt and matt and they're gonna just uh walk us through the stuff yeah yeah you're welcome many know us because of uh, the fall so you have to know that we are not just a designer we also have our own manufacturer we build everything in france and design everything so we have two different range the performer range um with uh, everything separate like you have the wing you have the stabs, you have the fuselage and the mass separate. And you also have like uh, on the other side of the monoblock ones. So you have the pure range and you have the silk range. So more uh, like uh, uh, with the bump, more for the waves riding. With the pure 900, more about winging. Yeah, winging, surfing. You pretty much do everything with it, depending on the stab that you're going to use. And there's a few positions for the stabs also. There's actually two positions. Oh, that's cool. Cloud9 does that as yeah. well. That's the only other one. It's interesting, especially with a stab like that, which is going to be more uh, for controlling high speed. Then it was, we've got a wave riding stab that goes with it also. That's going to add a lot of uh, maneuverability. So you could use it um, one, one step per, um, forward. So it's UHM carbon. Okay, very high quality. And here you have the... Very high aspect, pure 1100. That thing looks like a gliding, yeah. no drag, like it looks amazing. That's a Richard toy. Mm -hmm. He loves to go like downwind and uh, play hours and hours on the waves. Um, lots of glide, right? Yeah. And this one, that's, there's a pure uh, 800 HA also, which is AR 13.4. 13.4? Yeah. Oh my gosh. 13.4, 13.3, I'm not sure. So pretty um, yeah, high aspect also, obviously huge glide. And uh, we're able to use uh, some pretty thin mast also because of the type of carbon that we use. So we are uh, 14 mil on our mast. Oh Those wow, masts. the whole way, 14 mil? Uh, yeah, 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 it's about that. I think a tiny bit more on the top actually, but uh, still we're wow. for, for, for fall that span, with that span, we are able to still use some uh, pretty thin mast. 560 pure also, that's the smallest range, uh, smallest size. Uh, typically for racing on the wing, ideally. Oh, that, that, must fl that must fly. Yeah. What's the top speed on that? Like uh, 30, 30 plus, yeah, right? Yeah, 30 plus, yeah, yeah, yeah. Easily. Easily wow. 30 plus. That's a 11 mil mast on it. 
Oh my gosh. That's the master sheet. It's the master of the of the racing for it. Holy smokes. So that's high end for sure. That's great, Kath. Let me feel it. Oh, okay. This one is heavier? Yeah, it's a little heavier. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting. The stiffness is uh, the key for this one. Huh. We're able to do uh, stiff and light. But for the racing one, it's pretty much full. There's no foam inside. So, so no one. drag and the most stiffness yeah, yeah. possible. Yeah, yeah. This is the advanced board made uh, also in France, full carbon. Uh, here are the new uh, boards, like the, you know, the waves um, riding boards. Oh, that's uh, a wing board? Or a yeah, prone yeah, board. You could wing yeah, it. you can uh, wing foil, it. Foil, foil, foil boards. Oh, okay, pro, yeah, for yeah, you okay. can wing it. Downwind. Uh huh. You know the new uh, downwind custom seven point two, and the, the Blackbird six point four. Uh, we have also the Blackbird in six point two. Yeah, I like how you have a volume forward on all the boards. Yeah. like that's really important to not sink the nose. No, on for the sure. Yeah, board. it's also the, the the best way to get um, the volume under your feet as a. Low as possible to make sure yeah. that the foil feel is going to be ideal. So. Cool. And then you have the three wings. You have like a, an entry level, and then yeah. you have more of a high so, performance. Yeah, basically, the Wilf is a free wide wing. Uh, we would say entry level, but it's more of a light wind in uh, in your hands and stuff. That's not going to be uh, super powerful even if the wind is gusty and stuff like that. Gotcha. So you could use it without the harness, pretty much in any conditions. The other one is the Diamond. Pretty similar, quite similar shape in some ways but extra stiffness and extra performance with it. The wild in between is more of a free ride, uh, free race, I would say, aspect. So flatter profile, but uh, super stiff profile and um, general uh, frame. So ideal on the harness and you want to be powered up with this one to go super fast and go up wind like crazy. Awesome. Um, maybe I'll try it out later if we get some wind. If I have so many boards to try out and stuff. But um, if not, come to LA and let's do a... a Just you know, before we finish, uh, here are the new fly. Uh, that's a new board with uh, a lot of volume in the front. And I think it's kind of cool because uh, it makes it the sport much easier. The price point for all the product also is key. Uh, with uh, AFS, you know, we are making product uh, to the right price and we have we do have a warehouse here in the u.s so we ship from the u.s perfect thanks for the info guys the, the stuff looks like i try to race jan sometimes and he's so fast on on your stuff so well that's the uh, ahg because we are afs and ahg that's uh, also our bolts awesome thanks for the info thank you cheers all right now i'm in the uni tent so i can Actually, no, hold on. Switch this out. Here, let me just give you a... Oh, this, one's, this one is worn out. This one is pretty rough. On Dude, my so hair was looking so there, bad so yesterday. There, there we go. So now you got a new one. Sick. Okay, I've been hiding this because I want the other... You know, I want people to talk to me as a as a, yeah. a impartial. All right, so I'm here with Dom. Foil this on Instagram. This Yee. dude crushes. What's up? What's up? Uh, look, I don't want to talk to you too long. Uh, you know, I really am loving the 125 that you guys just tested, let me test. And uh, I rode the 200 and the 140 yesterday. I thought the 140 was the 170, which, <laughs> but in a good way. So I was like, that foil has some range. Um, just tell us, like, really quickly what's going on this year. And, and you know, we'll catch you in, in the other videos for sure. Yeah, I know, I know. Super stoked. Super stoked that you like that 125. It's been an epic wing for this uh, AWSI. So the 125 is obviously what everyone's talking about finding out what an epic wind wing wing this is for these guys. Top end, the turnability, the maneuverability, the glide, the ease of use on this thing is what everyone's really talking about. So we're super stoked on releasing this 125 and we just released the the biggest foil of the progression range to date is gonna be the progression 200. Um, the boys have been downwinding this thing like crazy all week. I had a chance to get on our downwind board and give this thing a go and you can get up super easy on this. I prone foil this thing. This is a great light wind, uh, winging wing too. But yeah, the feedback on these two has been insane. They've been going all day. I'm gonna be pushing people to buy that for uh, beginners. It's an epic beginner wing. The, I mean, the the ease to get up on light wind days is um, it, like unimaginable. And the glide that it has on there too is, is so fun. The thing pumps like a champ. You put a short fuse in there, with the 200, you can pump all day long. Oh, yeah. interesting. Okay. Um, and then the last thing I got is this new Quiver Killer that's been done with by uh, Eric Aniston and Mike Pettigo. It's a crossover board. So what I mean by that is you can either take this out and prone foil this either on a bigger day, a little more foam to get you into those waves, or on a super small micro day where you don't want to compete with any longboarders. You want a little more foam. Great board. If you 
downwind prone, it's another good board for that, but it's also an epic sinker wind wing board. Um, yeah, I bet. The takeoff is super easy, doesn't stick. Guys like how narrow it is. It's 5'2 by 19 by 3.6 at 45 liters. Whoa. We're doing a 5'6 at uh, 55 liters as well. Dude, that's so sick. Uh, the other last thing, like, uh, what about the, there's new tails? Like, what's the difference on yeah, these guys? Yeah, so last year when you guys came and checked us out, we were doing the G10 tails, or the three packs that we did the shut, the shiv, and the shank last year in the G10. What we're trying to do at Unifoil is to provide our customers the best performance experience that's possible. So upgrading from G10 to carbon, you're going to have a lot more stiffness um, in the tail. We've got a killer little red tint. I don't know if you can see it in the light. Oh, yeah. Um, in there. And then next in front of these, we've got the new progression tails that Eric's done. It's based off of the, the shiv template, but he's thinned the profile on it a little bit and just tweaked the, the outline a bit really really stable it really helps with the pump and the glide on the progression wing you want to loosen it up and make it a little more lively just go ahead and just cut the tips it takes about an inch off so you're down to a 12 and a half inch tail oh well. cool so yeah those are the newest things we have oh and one more thing we do aluminum mass and this year we're also offering an aluminum fuselage so for, oh. for the crew that maybe doesn't have the budget to buy in to the unifoil brand with all the carbon gear, we're gonna be offering the setup. You can get an aluminum fuse, aluminum mass, and the carbon front wings for a fraction of the cost. That's awesome. Um, yeah, so like, just real quick, I just wanna tell you, you know, like, I love the Unifoil brand, I love the wings and stuff. I wasn't like sure that they had a really good wing foil wing, you know, like I love the Viper on like big waves, but it didn't really glide me enough, you know, for like the tricks I wanna do. And then you guys came out with the 125 and I rode it and I'm, Honestly, I'm probably going to be staying on Unifoil for the for the for the foreseeable future because of that. It's such a good wing, and I want everyone to go out and try it. Expect a video soon. I'm stoked. On that. Appreciate it, Rob. Stoked that you're uh, enjoying that wing, and right. uh, looking forward to sharing with you what we have to come for 2024. Sick. I think it's going to be a good year for Sick. you. Right on, man. Appreciate it. <laughs> Sick. This is Nathan. This dude, he's a ripper. He's been posting <laughs> the sickest videos lately. I think he's gonna go try the Uni One Two Five. Right? Yeah, is that right? Get tested. I'm super, super excited. I think it's gonna be amazing. Can you go get out in the water? The wind is absolutely amazing. Big wing, uh, small foil. Hopefully, lots of speed. So, can you go get in there? Test it out. Have lots of fun. Cool. This is the wing uh, Nathan's been ripping on. It's a new uh, fly surfer. It's a little bit more freestyle and stuff oriented. A little bit less. Uh, uh, racy, uh, the one we tried, the Mojo last year. Looks nice. This is the craziest thing. I, I saw <laughs> I saw this guy yesterday. I was like, man, why does he look so familiar? Good thing I shaved today. Right? <laughs> and then I realized this is the dude. This is Jason Voss. I talk about the windsurfing camps in Rio Vista. This is the guy who took my windsurfing at a 14 years old, took me from not getting in the straps really to jumping and all this stuff. In my Jiving for Dummies video, it's a lot of his info that I put in there when I'm talking about the windsurfing style jibe. Anyway, this guy does lessons out at the Delta still. Sherman Island. Sherman Island, the best instructor. Seriously, it's so by cool. To day, by appointment. By appointment only. Yeah. <laughs> Check him out. All right. It's good to see you guys. <laughs> this is, uh, I'm afraid to even step foot in this tent after what happened last year. <laughs> no. Um there is a new toy. This is a 590. And the 700. I don't think we have the 700. And the, se the 700 looks sick. What's the um, what's the AR on these guys? 11. 11. Yeah, these wings go up to 11. <laughs> it looks like more than that. You're going for all the performance, and it's at 10. No, these wings go to 11. <laughs> Um, that's crazy. And it, you're still on, this is like, I think so one of the best mass systems, the R, it's called the, the R, R frame. R frame. For rigid. For yeah. rigid. Um, wow. Is this hard to get on foil? The aspect ratio really helps. Like as you go to smaller sizes, you want to push the efficiency of the wing. And the fact that the area is so small allows you to have a really big aspect ratio without the span getting out of control. Like you can't do an aspect of 11 on a 1500 because the wing will be like this long. Well, but, some people are doing that. <laughs> well, very large span wings have a problem that they get locked in roll. 
And also, it's very difficult on a wing that long to have the mast system rigid enough. Gotcha. So that it doesn't wobble. Yeah. But, you know, as we're going to smaller, smaller wings, uh, we can go to really high aspect ratios. And uh, it's weird. We couldn't do it with the kite foil racing because you ride so sideways going upwind that the lured wing tip would come up. Okay. But... We're nowhere that rolled over with the wing foiling, so yeah. it really opens this up. And a lot of people have the impression that, oh, look at that thing. That thing's going to be crazy hard to ride. Uh -uh. Super easy. Well, I believe you because the 850 was super easy to ride, and that was the first 850 I got on that I felt, oh, this is like, this makes sense. So yeah. I've, I've gotten on some other ones now where, yeah, it seems like now you can ride smaller foils and they have... A little bit more user friendly and yeah but this thing looks like it probably actually glides even yeah. though it's tiny yeah i'm you know i'm kind of like i'm not an elite level rider by any means at all i mean i'm a competent foiler i've been at it a long time but i'm also pretty old uh and the 700s kind of the big my go-to foil it's the biggest i ride the biggest you ride. i mean the 700 yeah and the 590 is really nice if you know when you get out there and you have the wing in your hand and you feel some power, like it's got some pull, it, it's moving the board pretty well, then you've got plenty of power to get up on a 590. Great. Uh, yeah, last year, I, guys, I, I said the 850 was my favorite high aspect foil. That thing just glided like crazy. It was super easy to ride. So I hope some of you checked it out. Yeah, the 700 and the 590 step it up even more. Awesome. Sure. Very cool. Thanks. All right. Take care. <laughs> So I took out the 700 and it was pretty light wind, like 10 to 15 maybe, I don't know, maybe a little bit more. And George tried to get me to take out the 590 or whatever that one is. And I said, George, no one that watches my channel will buy that foil this year. People just don't believe me when I tell them that they can ride smaller foils. Look at me pumping the 700, just, you know, getting so much out of it. Um, here I tested the, the wingtip breaching. I was able to ride out of that one. Uh, the next two I came down and taxied, but with a little bit of practice on that, you could definitely breach this foil pretty easily. Breach as well, um, which is always nice. This is just doing a little Rayleigh. Like I said, it was really light wind. I touched the board down as well, but still got a little bit of enough pop to get a little Rayleigh out, show the logo. And yeah, here's a light wind speed run. So th that is the one thing about these foils. The, you know, the better the low end, the lower the top speed. This was light wind, and I was still getting up around 23 and, and sustained and controlled. This is a very, very stable foil. If you want a stable foil, look, and then I finished off with a flocka. If you want a stable foil that glides really well to ride swell, this is it. This is it. 700. If you're going to be in big conditions... Go with the, the 590 or whatever that one was. There's the back winding showing the, the, the capability of that foil to glide. It's very hard to glide without a, or it's very hard to back wind without a glidey foil. And then once again, just showing how much power is in that foil. Look at that pump for a 700. Impressive. All right, I just took out uh, the 700 from George. Uh, great Delta foil, it really it works great, had no problems, did some speed runs, we'll see what that looks like. I'm going to take out the uh, new Elevate wing, I don't even know what this is called, GT1 it looks like. GT1 Plus, it's a beautiful wing. Uh, we're going to take out the 7 because it's not that windy and we just want to, I know the big dogs like the big... Alright, Elevate uh, GT1, 7 meters, not very windy, so I was able to get going on a 5, I should be pretty good on this. And you can see there was no wind on the inside and not very much on the outside either. Um, I don't think this is really a 7 meter. I would probably call it a 6 is just what it felt like to me. Um, here you can see me pumping, getting up on foil. And the, uh, the wing feels good. It's got some interesting handles. I think like the plastic is removable so you can have soft handles if you want it. Though I don't know why anyone would. It's got a very stiff uh, material in the leading edge. I think it's uh, proprietary, something, it's not Dacron, it's something else. The canopy is incredibly taut. It has a lot of forward pull. It might be a little bit too much forward pull, like a little back windy. But yeah, jibes really well. Um, what do I try here? I do a little Heineken jibe. So you can see the wing is very maneuverable. You know, they call it a seven and that's 
pretty pretty easy Heineken jibe there. Um, what do I do here? Oh, it looks like attack. Yeah, able to attack it very easily. And I think... Uh, oh, this is an upwind performance, maybe. Yeah, I was getting a crazy angle. I was going almost straight up the river. Yeah, look at there. Straight up the river. So very good upwind performance. That's because that canopy is so tight and the leading edge is so stiff. So I think this is actually like a pretty high performance wing. I would even like to try the, the smaller ones, I think would be even better in a, in a lot of ways because you could do... You could do a lot with those smaller ones with the, the high performance. And look, it's just a cool looking wing. It's just got nice design, nice colors. And here I'm luffing it. It's very, very stable. So very good for wave riding. And then this clip is just showing how everyone else was schlogging. I was pretty much the only one on foil at that point with the 700 foil and I'm 200 pounds. So think, think about that. So the wing is good, but also that foil is good. If, if I'm able to fly when no one else is. Yeah, Elevate GT1. Really good canopy, really good canopy tension. Look at that thing, beautiful wing, beautiful wing. And we remember this is Kevin from last year, right? What's going on. Yeah, and then they got the new Elevate, got the removable handles, hard handles, and then they have a new version of the WFS. Very cool. I went to the boom this year, so if you're looking for a boom, and especially, I think their price point on that is better than like the Duotone, so. I enjoyed it. I thought it was a good wing last year. Might be worth checking out. Apple Tree has a. They've got. They're making the board for Omen. This is the new foil. H Dip has this in LA. He's been trying to get me to ride it, but he told me I had to ride it four times before I reviewed it. And I said, No, H Dip, you don't tell me what to do. We'll see. H Dip says the 1050 is awesome, so maybe we'll try it. Reedon has a very nice looking um, big wing now with the, it's got the strut system. I guess they also leased it. I actually think that's one of the nicer looking color schemes on any wing. It's got hard handles. That could be a good one for the big dogs. I don't know how big it goes. This is a six. It looks big though. The answer is nine. They have a, up to a nine meter now, seven, eight, nine. I talked to one of the owners, he's actually down in San Diego, and I really thought the wing looked pretty good, felt pretty good, especially the smaller ones. I'm probably going to get together with him in LA and do a, a review. All right, so uh, Kane promised us he'd show us some stuff over here at the KT tent. Yeah. What do you have? So these are some foils I'm working on with KT. Um, it's kind of a surf slash wing foil range targeted at user friendliness, intuitiveness, and a really wide uh, range, a lot of versatility. So it's kind of my ideal surf foil and it's something on good days I would use downwind um, or riding waves, that, that kind of thing. Cool. Um, there's some pretty unique concepts here, especially in the wing design. We're running a very, it's called a rear loaded airfoil, pretty aggressive rear loaded airfoil. It's got a ton of camber near the trailing edge, this concave. <laughs> and what that does is through a bunch of compromises and in, in, you know, reducing the cord of the wing and changing the angle of attack of the wing, you end up with a wing that has a lower takeoff speed, more glide, and a higher top speed. You have a higher to a, Yes, compared to a standard section. So I've noticed, I've been riding a lot of these new sort of concave wings and they feel slow to me, is that? Yeah, part of what you have to do on the, with, with adding this much concave is reducing the area of the wing. So increase the camber, reduce the cord. And then another thing I do to, to maintain the top speed is uh, keep the leading edge extremely symmetrical. So on this wing, the front third of the wing is almost completely symmetrical. And that really helps extend the top end speed of the foil. Oh, interesting. Very cool. And what, do you have a couple of sizes or? Yeah, so with me here, I have kind of the bottom the bottom end of the range of these. I have a 700 and an 830. These are similar in speed range to most 800 and 1,000 square centimeter wings. So I, yeah, I think like a lot of people hear that and I, I'm popular on a Facebook page called Wing Foil for Big Dogs. <laughs> and they're gonna hear that and say, whoa, that's so small. Yeah, but it's I, not. It's not. It's not. Right. Um, I can flat water start both of these. We we're also out and we teach, we don't teach a ton of very little wind and having no problem with the low end. Like the speed range on the 830 is, for reference, similar to maybe a progression 140. And then can you just tell me about your tails? Everyone talks about your tails. I've never had a chance to try one. What's the, what, why are they so good? What's, what makes them so good? 
really what makes them so good is I'm able to try them with a lot, really, really wide range of gear. And so through that, I'm able to learn a lot about what the tail needs to do, the range it needs to operate it, to operate in, and then the user preference. And so what people like uh, as far as tail wings. Recently, these are not out yet. I've been going to really high aspect ratios, wow. inspired by uh, my diamond race foil, and uh, playing with stiffness and aspect ratio to try, and a little bit of sweep even, to try and uh, maintain the turning, take advantage of the insane speed and glide of the uh, high aspect tail. If I feel like a foil is draggy and I yeah. put that on, it's going to feel better? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, even between, say, my, my 14 Marlin, which is a pretty popular tail, and a a pretty low drag tail it's a big jump to one of these oh speed. is there a an adjustment period in terms of riding the main adjustment period is the, the takeoff speed would be slightly higher and it will be a little bit stiffer in turns compared cool. to a, a, a lower wingspan tail very cool maybe someday you can do a video explaining the shimming degrees and yeah. and, and angle of, and all that because i know a little bit about it just mostly through feel but man it, it's so confusing because what the, really what the tail is doing is preventing the nose from pitching down. So all foils take the tail tail wing away uh, are going to pitch down super aggressively because of the drag of the wings, the fuselage, like what's down here, and the lever mast. And so you have all this drag on, on a big long lever, and as you accelerate, that drag increases, and it's going to want to rip your nose down. Uh, and so what the tailing does is, you know, pushes down, keeps your nose up, and helps compensate for that. And so anytime you change the mass length, the the wings and the tail, and anything anything changing the drag down here, or the length of the lever, even to board thickness, um, you will change what shim is optimal. Very cool. Well, you know what? I think, I think you've convinced me I'm going to order... Maybe a Marlin or something. I don't know. Is that, is that the, a good first? Yeah. Wait, is that a good first KD Maui I think, tail? I think a 14 or 15 would be a really good, really good first choice. Um, and they work super well with the progressions. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for the info, man. It's been uh, educational. Yeah, I have some demos. So if you ever want to try one down here, uh, cool. feel free. Take it first. Man. Thanks, man. Take care. Awesome. Thank you. All right. The hype on uh, KD Maui is real. Kids are real deal. Knows what he's talking about. That foil he's making with KT looks amazing. Um, he's got some really good ideas. He's a real smart guy, real smart kid. Was he 19, 20? That's crazy. He might be a couple years older than that, but still. Can't wait to try that foil next year, hopefully. Looks really good. All right, uh, LA's a familiar face. This is Ryan. Everyone knows him. Nicest guy in LA. Amazing prone foiler, winger, everything. How's it going? Good, Rob. How are you, man? Good, good. to be out here and tons of goodies that are unreleased so far. So it's been fun to take a look at everything, but Sick. lots of new downwind boards coming out, new wings, lots of new materials. So it's cool to kind of see everything and how light everything is now. Sick. Are you you're here with Foiling Magazine yeah, doing some write-ups? Yeah, doing uh, video interviews. So oh, I've got okay. my day cut out ahead of me and I'll be going through with the mic and the cameraman and interrogating every brain. Good for you, man. Good for you. Cool. Well, see you soon. Good to see you, Rob. <laughs> All right, I think that's enough interviews for today and maybe forever. I don't know. Um, I'm going to try and get on the water, get some footage, see what we want to ride. I'm not even sure what I want to test, really. It's just too much stuff, you know. Everyone wants you to test, like, everything. Okay, I'm over here at AFS. I'm going to test out this downwind foil. It looks really gnarly. It's almost like an ART uh, axis. But it looks actually better. We'll see though. All right. This is up on this beast. I think we'll be able to get some swell energy off of this. We'll see. Well. Oh yeah. Let's pump across to this one. Oh good, look at this. Oh, this is a machine. This is a machine. Holy smokes. Now look at this. Oh, look at this. This is where it's at. 
Whew. Oh, pump across. Oh, that's going to be a tough one. Oh, we almost made it. Oops, I mean, I left off. So yeah, uh, this foil is, blew my mind. It's so glidey, so slippery. The construction is so beautiful. Um, yeah, it, it has a little bit higher stall speed just because it, it's really maximized for that high end performance. But once you get onto a swell, if you just keep that hot, that stall speed up a little bit, you just glide forever and you get pushed around by the swell. It's fantastic. It turns well too. Just one of the best downwind foils I've tried. I'm gonna take this uh, wing from uh, someone on the water here. One of Blue Planet's wings. Gonna try it out. The board or the wing? What'd you like better? I think it's blue. Oh, you're a part of the company. I didn't know that was you. I switched over to the Pure 700 because I felt the need. The need for speed. I already like Blue Planet because they have a harness line on here. That's how you know someone is actually a winger. I like the wing. I know what they're talking about. I don't love this left handle. It's too floppy. And I think Robert would have that figured out since he's living in Hawaii. You can see me pumping here. That's not because the Blue Planet has no low end. That wing is actually pretty strong. It's just because this is a fairly small foil that requires power. It took me quite a few pumps to get it up on foil. And then you see I practiced a little jump here. There wasn't too much wind there. But man, once you get this foil up, this thing is a rocket ship, especially with this, um, this alien eyes uh, blue planet wing. Uh, let me do some speed runs. We might be able to break 30 here. We'll see if there's enough wind. So yeah, I decided to drop the hammer and see what I could do. Unfortunately, look at my stupid GPS. It's stuck on 25 there. I don't. It's like not working. And this is probably the fastest run I did right here. Seems like here the GPS starts working again. So we were able to register 26. It felt a lot faster than me. This foil feels fast. And then disaster struck when I tried one last jump. I flipped the board over. I, I landed so hard on the board. Look at that. I lost the board midair. And I think maybe the foil broke on the way up. Only two screws holding that mast in. I had to paddle in, trying not to lose that expensive, beautiful foil. One of my favorite foils I've ever tried. Uh, this, the whole like box D lamb from underneath, and yeah, disaster. So I uh, broke another board. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know if that was my fault or if the. F1 stuff is just breaks. I don't know if the screw, the, the bolts were the right side. I don't know. There's a lot of possibilities, but I was having a blast on that AFS foil until that point. All right, Dan's here. He's showing off the uh, the Blue Planet wing, alien wing. I was just flying on this thing with the AFS foil. I was going to come in and try the their new board, but I got bummed out after breaking my board. Look at this. It's actually really kind of cool looking. Like I like the colors. Got the alien eyes. Pretty sick. It's pretty powerful. And it's so well balanced. You can just hold them with one hand. Oh, yep, yep. And I said, I already said on the video that I like the fact you guys have a harness line on your wing. Yeah. No one else has a harness line on their wings. It's balanced. <laughs> yeah, you know, so I mean, like, you know, I, I want to test it out how I normally would ride with a harness line. Cool product. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful wing, actually. Really cool. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Well, pretty big bummer at the end there. Absolute rocket ship, that foil. I was doing speed runs. Of course, the GPS stuck at 25 and not on for like the fastest part of the run. 
I thought it was close to 30. It just kind of felt like I was breaking that barrier. Really annoyed that it didn't register. Maybe it was only 27 or 28, but that thing is a rocket ship. I was on the Blue Planet alien wing. It wasn't even that windy. It really wasn't. I was flying on that thing. And then I'm like, well, you know, if this thing goes so fast, let me see if I jump a lot higher going this fast. I load up for the jump. And I don't know for sure what happened. There's two possibilities. One, the foot straps were too loose because it's a new board. I haven't like dialed it in exactly. I lost the, the, the board. It was out of control. I landed really hard on the board. Really glad I was wearing a helmet there. I hit with like my shoulders on the back of the head. I landed and there was nothing I could do. I was, just, I was so out of control. I couldn't really steer clear of it. I was just glad to see the board flip over. The other possibility is that it might have broken the board on the way up on the jump and that's why I lost the board because it didn't make sense that I lost the board like I was in the foot straps pretty good I didn't it wasn't like a weird takeoff or anything and I just was so out of control that makes that the only time that's happened to me the last time that happened to me was when I broke the um, the HPS 1050 it was the same thing I was loading up I went to jump the foil broke and I just got so out of control I don't know but I will say that the board is kind of a piece just in terms of like the construction is pretty whack it's pretty whack honestly and i went over to f1 they were pretty cool about it like it's a used board i just bought it we don't know what it's been through i have like aftermarket nuts in it because it has a stupid shallow foil box a really dumb foil box and they were like yeah we'll try and warranty it for you so i mean like that was pretty cool of them i was liking the board actually it's like heavy because it's the uh, asc construction I don't want to talk about that too much, though, but it kind of makes me, like, just, I don't know, I was thinking about leaving tomorrow anyway, because the wind's not supposed to be good, and it kind of just bums me out. It's a pretty good day up until that point, riding the Delta wing, the 700 of that, riding the uh, Elevate new wing, testing out the AFS stuff. I was going to test some other stuff, but I was just so bummed after that happened, and I, I kind of scratched up George's foil again. I was being so careful and I'm paddling in and there must have been like a rock right when I was paddling in and I just barely touched it and he's got like a lacquer on there so I don't think it actually like really went into the carbon too much but every time I demo that guy's foil I have a bad luck. I, I was being so careful too. Man you know I'm sticking with Unifoil probably because I already have the system. I like the 125. It's a cool foil for what I do but if I was going to switch AFS would be up there. It reminds me of like Axis, if Axis was French and had less draggy foils. Everything is so clean and so slippery and I tested out that 1100, their big new downwinding wing. Oh my gosh, that thing is just amazing. But AFS, welcome to the US AFS because I think after this video, people are going to want to buy it. If I was a racer, I would absolutely be looking into AFS. Those are some fast foils. I have to figure out what to do with if I'm going to go home or not. Or I, I don't even know what to do. I don't even have a board. I broke my other board. I broke this board. I could still ride the other board maybe. Just no jumping. Maybe I'll just go surf at the ocean. I don't know. What a bummer way to end the trip. All right, I've been sitting in my tent all morning. Uh, I skipped to the day three at AWSI. Didn't seem like there was any wind, wasn't really interested. I decided I'm gonna go to probably Lake Tahoe, chill there for a day, and then uh, go drop my other board off in Santa Cruz, and then head home to LA. You know, I was thinking about the board breaking yesterday, and I remember now, I didn't put that mast on the board. The AFS guys did. And there was one bolt I can't remember exactly which one, but I, I, I said, oh, that looks like it's too far, you know, out. It's one of those sliding slots where you can slide the, the bolt in. And the guy's like, no, no, it's okay. And he tightened it down some more. I wonder if that was fully tight and if it was, you know, too close to the edge. I don't know. But I just would like to take away some of the blame from F1 and maybe spread it around to AFS. I did awards last year of like, you know, my favorite top picks and stuff. It feels weird to do that this year because I really didn't ride that much stuff, but I will throw out a couple for sure. Best board, PPC. 
super lightweight and the construction's amazing. You press on the rails and you don't feel anything. Really impressive. I'd be interested in getting one of those. Best new wing, I'd have to say that Elevate GT1 Plus is, is really interesting. Very excellent uh, wing, looks good. And the canopy tension and upwind performance is really something to, to brag about. The Delta 700 HA, that would have to get best gliding foil, uh, best stable and best gliding foil. I don't know. It's a weird thing to say, but yeah, if you just look at, if you're a guy that just wants to cruise and ride swell and you don't like a, a really, um, out of control foil, that's a good foil for you. It'll get you up in like no wind and you'll be able to ride swell. And yeah, uh, that brand deserves some recognition. George is doing some good work over there. Then we have to say best race foil. Automatically, it's the AFS uh, 700 or smaller. I didn't try the smaller ones. Yeah, they're going to be faster. Best foil company. I'm going to have to throw it out as AFS this year. Their foils and their variety and everything is just amazing. It's just amazing. Yeah, let's also give them best downwind foil. The uh, Pier 1100. Incredible. Pretty sick. Pretty sick. And then Progression 125, it's, that's, that's probably my most fun foil. Uh, obviously, that's why I'm still riding Unifoil. But AFS! The French came hard this year.